I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this green here. Let me zoom it in a little bit. So you can see it. And um, using the photo as my, my reference, I'm not going to put any of this petal on anything in up here. It's just going to be all these flowers down here. And I'm going to, I know that the drawing doesn't have all the lines and everything in it, but in my mind I'm going to create something a little different here. So where there is no little petals, I'm going to make, create a petal. And I'll show you how I've done whenever I'm trying to do a, uh, negative painting so we'll start with this right now and got my, too much too much water on my brush and I'm doing wet paint on dry paper I'm only going to have this available to you guys to you from the, at the Green Ridge nobody else will see this one So you'll have a, a link for this one to, to be able to see it. So this is, this is shiny and wet right now, and I don't want to put any paint on it until it starts, the shine starts going away. So up here, up here is a little darker petal right in through here, which I did not put it in. So I'm going to pretend I know where it is. And it's okay if all these, if some of these colors kind of bleed together. It's not going to hurt anything. That's what gives it the uh, fresher look. And I'm going to have to put this up a little bit because I'm getting a glare on my painting that I can't see. But with it being up, it's going to be better for me to see. And hopefully, it'll be okay for you. And like I said, I'm just pretending I know where this, where, know, where I know where these leaf shapes are. So I paint the darker color right into the, the, form, the lighter one there. And then I just let it sit. I just let it go ahead and melt together the way it wants to. I'm not going to try to force it to do anything. There's a lot of little tiny green leaves in this. And I'm going to try to upload this. If I get it done tonight, I'm going to try to upload it so you can watch it and maybe it will help Fran out since she didn't get to be a part of the class today. I still feel bad that that happened. See, so what I'm doing is, that's already damp, and this wet paint is going right into it, and it will stop going where it, where it starts to dry out. It'll stop there. So this is already ready, and this is, uh, let's see, this is a blue there. I'm seeing it kind of a bluish green. So I'm going to put a little bit of a bluish green in here that looks blue, but I'll have to put a little bit of green in it. These are very tiny leaves, and I. What I should do is just. Um, 
So see, I just dropped it in there, just it's what that one guy called charging. And all this is fairly wet over here, so I'm not going to do a whole lot with it. And I dry my brush off. So here's part. A lot of times you can just fill it in with green and it'll look fine. It'll it'll read like it's like a leaf. Even though you don't say what the shape is, it'll read like there's a leaf there. wrong color. So I put a little bit of burnt sienna in there just to pretend that the dirt is showing through. Back here, the dirt is showing through, so I'm gonna gonna kind of sculpt that around, and I'm gonna put the dirt right in here. This is part of the negative painting, so you see I'm just pretending that that dirt is there, and I'm just gonna kind of shove that up a little bit to kind of blend the one color into the other one. We need a little bit more dark in through here. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to this side. Now this is my shadow side, so when I say that, I'm looking at this and I don't have enough shadow. So what I'm going to do is, after I, this all dries, I'm going to put a glaze of probably cobalt blue or something over right around in this area because right in here is where the, these flowers are casting a shadow over the greens. 
So I'm going to turn this, turn this around. I'm going to turn my photo upside down too. Because then all I'm doing is I'm paying attention to the shapes within that. And so what I'm probably going to do is, so this is this flower right here, or petal. So there's one here. Okay. So I'm going to use the um, Shoot, I forgot the name of the, the paint, the green. Anyway, you all have that green, I'm, not, I'm sure. I just can't remember it right at the moment. Sap green is what it is. So I'm going to put that in here. It's getting a little, the bubble, the area here where it's wet. And I think, Cheryl, you said... What do you do about those? You just blot your brush and then just pick it up where you don't want that big blob of water, the drop of water. I'm going to put a little bit yellow, more yellow tone out here. And what I'm focusing on now is just getting the lark, the darker edges right up against the light, so it can the dark will define the light, meaning this is the dark and this is the lighter area. So it it kind of tells a little bit of a story of what's really there. So I'm going to go over here and put this up against this purple. Looks like there's a little pe pe peaking of green right there in that one spot. Maybe not. And I'd suggest you kind of look at your photo reference as I'm doing this, and maybe you'll understand a little bit better why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now I'm just following this upside down right in here. So I'm leaving a space for the dark. As soon as that loses that shine, I'm going to put some more color on that. So here's... Here's a little darker spot right in here. A little bit of ultramarine in there. And then carry that out.
I was telling Debony today, and I'm probably told you guys before too, that I I have to put my finger since there's so much going on in this photo. I put my finger on that so I can actually follow where I'm at. Now I lost my place. I think this is I think this is where I was. Yeah. So I'm putting the dark up against that edge so that that little petal of the flower shows up. I'm going to drop a little bit of color in there. And there. And this is pretty wet. I don't know if you can see, but it's really, really wet. If I put my finger through it, you know, it doesn't make any line. So I have to really make sure that I don't get it too wet. So now see, it's not pushing, bleeding over. It's just a little bit lighter blue-green. So when this, when this color is ready, I will put another little dark line down through here so that it can so it can define this vein right here. There's a little bit of a vein. It's hard to see, but it's it's there. Okay, that's lost its shine now, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a darker line in there so I can define this. I'll turn it sideways. I didn't get much of a definition in there, but that's all right. There's a little bit of one. And here's a spot of white. And I'm just going to cover that up. Same with this. There's another spot of white. And this part is a dark green area. So I'm going to mix some <clears throat> ultramarine blue and some of the sap green and put it right in here. So for the most part right now I have all my basic colors in. I'll have to do a little bit more defining here. I'm going to fix this right here because this isn't showing up right. I'm going to go ahead and do, let's see here, I'm just going to mix up a dark brown for the dirt, and I'll make the dark brown, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, dark brown and some ultramarine blue. And 
drop some ultramarine blue in there to make it a little dark because there's a shadow there. You guys, if you get this done, you've done very well because this is really challenging. I, I've been giving you some challenging photos to, to work on. Because these brushes hold a lot of water and they hold, hold a lot of paint, I don't need to recharge my brush. I don't need to recharge my paint. This is a kind of a wimpy looking area right over here. I need to fix this. And if you're seeing things that I, I'm seeing things that you don't see, don't worry about it. You, you can create whatever you want to see in there. You can make as much dark areas or whatever you want in there. So it looks like I need to get a little bit more of a edge on this. Taking some quinacridone gold and sticking in there. Okay. So now in order to soften all this, this is kind of harsh and hard looking. I'm going to take some clean water. And I'm just going to lay it over top of all this. Just some water and just gently put the water down over it. And what that'll do is it'll kind of marry some of those colors together. It'll make it softer. Same with this one up here, but this one doesn't have enough uh, pink in it, so I'm going to add a little bit more pink. Okay, this yellow is just a little bit too bright and so is that. I didn't put any little lines in there, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> still going to use that same size brush.
Oops. Now I can see um, pencil lines here, and I don't know that that'll erase out, so I'm going to try, and if it doesn't, I'm just going to put a leaf in there. I think I just laid that in there. I'm just going to make sure I don't know if it's not totally coming out. So, when in doubt, put a leaf. Or another color behind there. Let's see. And what I have now is just a damp brush and I'm just bringing some of that color down just because okay next is the the pot so going to let's see what colors do I have here I've got kind of like a teal color down here so I'm, let's think about what color goes well with these colors I don't know that teal goes with these so it's I don't know let's see I know the burnt sienna will be fine and the raw sienna will be fine right in through here so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that color. So for the most part right now I'm going to mix up some burnt sienna make a puddle of the burnt sienna make a little puddle of the raw sienna And I also see some um, blue down in there. I think I'll just use some cobalt blue because I haven't used any of that on this. I've used it in some areas in there, but... Okay, so here we go. I'm wetting it. I'm going to come down here where this is, zigzag is. And I'm going to push the water up there. It's very wet. I don't want to put any, any color on there yet. So I'm going to go over here where there's another little zigzag line. And here's a little bit more. It's really wet over there. So I don't know if you can see, oh, I didn't, can't tell, but I 
don't know if you can tell that this it's really wet or not, but it's it's very wet. This side is less wet right over here till I just touched it. And I'm going to put some of this dark right up in here. This is where that pot needs to be dark, so I'm going to put that in there. Because it's part of this band that comes around where the inside of the pot is. And this paint is just about ready for me to put the burnt sienna in. So the, the glaze, the uh, shine has started to go off and now I'm just touching it and letting it just kind of play around right in through there. Going right up there where I put that color in. Bringing this down. I know I have not repeated the color the same as what's in the, the photo, but it doesn't matter. I'm just making up my mom, making it up as I go. So right here in that area, I'm going to put in. I'm going to put in some. Um, cobalt blue right on top of it and I just kind of just touch it and move it around just so that some of the other color of the blue or other other part of the brown comes through There's a little bit of the burnt sienna on my brush. It's making the the pot kind of grayish on that side, which is okay because it's on the shadow side. This is still shiny over there, but I'm going to go ahead. It's really shiny in through here, so I'm going to take my brush, my thirsty brush, and I'm going to pick up some of that paint water because it's just a little too wet right now. It's perfect right there, so I don't want to miss my opportunity to put my the paint in the right place. So I'm going to put in some of the... Uh, it's almost too dry. Can you see the hard edge I'm getting up there? But now it's softer down here in the bottom, which is perfect. I'm adding some ultramarine blue to the burnt sienna just to get that dark edge right there. My arm is about had it right now. And it looks like there's a little bit of a rose color. So I'm going to carry some of this rose down into the pot, down in through here, so that you have some of the repeating color down that way. Anytime you get a chance to repeat a color, you go ahead and put it in. I need a little bit more here. And I'm just softening that edge just a little. Okay. 
So here I have to make my decision what I'm going to do right here. I think I'll just use some of this blue. This was the cobalt blue and um, some of the burnt sienna that's still on my brush or some of the raw sienna that's still on my brush. And so I dampen my brush and then I soften that edge so that I don't get a hard line. And in a minute I'm going to take my brush, if I don't forget, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to soften that up in there so that I have that nice little circle. Looks like there's a little bit of that green down in there, so I'm going to bring some of my green pot color down in here too. And some blue. This is very wet paint. So I dampen my brush and I just take this out here if it comes out and it may not because I have two colors on there and one of them doesn't want to let go. It's starting to lift. I'll let that sit there for a minute and let it I keep wiping it out, lifting some of the paint. I think that's a I think that's a leaf under there, but I'm not going to change it right now. So I just put the wrong color in here. So I'll we'll improvise and put something up here like this. So that's a little too blue right in there. I'm going to just dull that down with some of the, the brown. The brown that I already mixed up with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, or no, burnt sienna and cobalt blue. So I'm just going to make sure my brush is not too wet. 
and I'm going to tone this down. So this side of the pot is the shadow side. So underneath here I see a little bit of blue, a bluish color, and then there's a, like a double. There's a dark shadow and then a lighter shadow. So that you want to make sure that you try to put that in there. So I'm going to mix up a gray, a gray blue, and I make my gray blue with, whoops, wrong color. I'm make my gray blue with raw sienna and cobalt blue. And I want it to look a little blue, but not too much. So I want to test it here and see what I, I got. That's probably about the right color because I'm going to wet this first because By wetting it, you'll be diluting your color that's coming, coming into this. Up here on the top of this, this has got a little bit more purple, so I'm going to make more of a purple shadow. So I'm going to put some water out in through here, and carry it right up to the, these flowers. And by putting the purple up through here, this is going to be a complement to that yellow. I hope. And I'm going to pretend this flower has got a, a little cast shadow. Okay, let's see. So, I'm going to make a, mix up here a little bit of pinkish, a pinkish purple. That looks, uh, that looks okay. I'm going to soften this edge because I don't want that hard edge out there. And soften this too. And down here we've got some blue. I'm going to carry some of that blue up in there too so that it kind of merges with the purple so it doesn't look like there's one not carried over to the other line. It just it, you got to carry your colors through. I'm going to fill in here. And this edge right here, there, I've got to have an edge right there, so I'm going to have to wait till that dries a little bit. I hope I get this done for you guys because I felt so bad today about all this technical difficulty I had. Now I'm just painting right along the edge of this pot. 
I really don't want that color to go out out in there but it can come inside it can come in here so dampen my brush and bring it in the bottom the bottom here needs a little bit of so what you do is you don't want to have a, a solid line you kind of break it up a little bit right in here. So I'm going to put a little bit of, I don't know, I see sort of a brownish color underneath here so I'm going to just put a little bit of that under here. Why? I don't know. Just because. And it's kind of like where the ta it's sitting down on the table, so I'm making, making it wet. And I'm going to bring in some of this color and then just drop it in. put some blue over here. Okay, so I'm softening the edge here. I don't know what else I want to do on this side. This is my warm side, so... Oh. Maybe I'll just carry some of this up there. put a little bit of yellow in it. So we could pretend that there's some shadows behind these flowers because the light is coming from this side, this way. And so I'm just going to pretend that there's a couple of shadows back here. We already got shadows from the pot and a couple of flowers, but I'm just going to pretend that there's some shadows behind here. I'm going to mix that up, do that with a mix of of what's on my palette here, which is the burnt sienna and cobalt blue. So I want to make sure this isn't too dark. Pretty dark. Pretty dark, so I gotta put a little bit more water in here. So 
So, just to pretend. So I'm just going to soften these outside edges and some spots, just let it kind of fade in. As the shadow gets away from the object, the object is more strong toward, it's more strong in the shadow and it's, it's, it fades out as it goes away. So, I'm going to carry that up to the top so that we have something going off that side and we have something going off this side. I could have put a, a leaf to go out there. When I crop this, I might bring the crop all the way in so that I can have, have it just kind of more centralized. But. One more thing, I need to bring this, the pot down a little bit to sit it on the ground, to so sit it down. So I'm putting this, I'm sitting the pot down now. Okay, stopping this for now. Let's see. Here's the bottom. It's kind of hard to tell what's there, but because it's wet. And the top, you can barely see the, the shadows cast from that. Oops, I'm getting in front of the, the light. It's still very wet, so I'm going to dry it and then finish it up.